As I said, mean it with your heart. Love you. <laughs> Good morning. Is this for me or for you? Good morning. I'll leave it here. Good to see you guys this morning. <laughs> We're having these uh, computer problems. We've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got a lot of different things going on, but that's all right. The enemy gets no credit for it because computers fell. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to talk about that, about the power the enemy has, which is this much. He only has as much power as you let him have, as much power as you give him. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning for your love, your mercy, your grace to us, Jesus. Thank you for the blessings, God, that you've flowed in this place. For all that you've done, Lord, the past four years. Just the amazing things that we've seen. The amazing growth, Lord, in you. We just praise you, Jesus, for you are merciful. You are a gracious, God. Thank you for your children, Lord. Each one, God. You died for everyone individually, Lord. We praise you for that. We magnify you. What a good God you are. What a perfect Savior you are. We thank you this morning for your love, for your mercy to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 119.32 says this. I shall run the way of your commandments, for you will enlarge my heart. I love having a big heart. I love loving people. I love knowing how to love people because He loves me and He's shown me that. And the Psalms 18.36 says, You enlarge my steps under me and my feet have not slipped. How many times have you ever felt that where you felt the road was narrow, things were narrow and God just widened every step underneath you and you just didn't miss a step? He knows what you need. He knows what we need as a people. In this city, He knows what we need. And I've been praying a prayer for, for a, long, a long time. I don't want to grow as, a, as a, a people without everyone being a powerful people. I want to grow and everyone that grows with us in this ministry is a powerful group of people. That we develop an army for God. An army of usable people. Knowing who they are, whose they are. Their identity being complete in Him. You've ne if you've ever closed your eyes and asked Him to show you a picture of how He sees you. It's amazing. If you've never done that, I'm going to give you a moment right now to close your eyes. And ask the Lord how He sees you. Let Him show you an image of that person. It might be through a collar. It might be through a, a, an, an image of a flower or a tree or something. But it's going to be something that means something to you. When He shows you, He actually has shown me the man that He's called me to be. That's what I'm striving for. That person. That man. That man of God. I'm not there yet. But I want to be there. I know what it looks like. I know what I'm supposed to look like. He's teaching me and he's growing me in all these things. So my prayer is Isaiah 40, 54, 2. It says, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Spare not. Lengthen your cords. And straighten your pegs. That's been my prayer for this ministry. And today we're going to do a flashback walkthrough of this ministry. Because we're, we're going to announce something today about some growth. Some issues, things that we're getting ready to step into. That we feel like it's what the Lord wants for us. What He has for us. And we're just attempting great things for him to expect great things from him.
First Chronicles 4.10 says, And Jabez, Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my borders, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. And I believe this morning that God has granted me what I've requested. What I have requested, He's granted me this morning. We're getting ready to make a move. We have several people missing today that are, that are sick, on vacation. A lot of things going on. But, but we've, been, we've been running pretty tight everywhere. I've pushed every wall out I could push out in this place. And I've, I've grabbed every nook and cranny and and put stuff in it and now I'm starting to have storage out here that I don't want to have I didn't want to have that so I've been asking the Lord what do you want us to do how do you want us to grow what are we going to do and, and, and my, my goal is the marsh building that's my goal I had several words spoken then but also I want you guys to know that, that we've talked about this before that w- when a baby's young and they're just starting to walk you wouldn't be able to give them the luggage that you have going on vacation with to carry out to the car and load in the car because it's too heavy. And when we stepped into this place, the place we're getting ready to move into is where we originally were going to be. Got kind of taken out from under us, and that's all right because the Lord was in that. Because it would have been too heavy. We would have been these babies trying to drag luggage and it wouldn't have worked. But what God said is, I want you here first. So we're going to go through, back through time. We're going to show you the very first place that we were. And I know you guys have seen some of these pictures before. When we started the ministry, I don't know if, if we got, do we have capability for pictures? All right, here we go. We started the ministry over at the park. And then we moved the ministry from the park. Hold on, don't, go back to that other one. Do you have the one with the four curtains? I don't know where you got those pictures. <laughs> My wife's sneaking in, putting pictures in that I don't even know about. Thank you, Shelly. October 4th, 2018 is when we, we started our ministry at the park. And just before that, Shelly and I had got to meet Mr. Steve Brown, and he was in a prayer meeting for revival in the city. His heart has always been for revival. And I believe that he's right now getting to see something that he's always wanted to see. He's getting to step into something that he's a part of, of creating, of starting, of of being a part of. I know his prayers, Steve, we feel them all the time. I know his prayers have been so strong for us. So we started in, in, in October 4th of, of 2018 through March of 2019. Start out with 18 people. And you know, I, you guys already know me by now. I dream big, I think big, and everything's big with me. It's like huge. And I thought there was going to be 100 people. Man, I was going to order t-shirts and I was gonna, it was going to be a big deal. And I remember when there's 18 people there and the pastor come up to me and I was, I was kind of discouraged about it because then, you know, I'm in my growing mode. Then I was numbers focused. Now I don't even care about that. I don't count. I don't know how many's here unless someone tells me. I don't care. I see there's, there's people here. But before I was, I was like, man, only 18 people. No, there was 18 people. That's my attitude. That's awesome. And I'm so grateful that, that we got to be over there and that they, we were supposed to have to pay for it and something else happened where we didn't have to pay for it the whole time we was there. It was just a really cool experience, a cool deal for there. Then we moved down here to the youth center. And there was a pickleball court that we set up and tore down in at the youth center. How many was at the youth center? Yeah, remember the pickleball court? We had to set up and tear down Darlene and Richard, man. I mean, it was like, 
it was, it was rigorous to set up and tear down every single Sunday. I mean, it was, it was a chore. Because again, I set things up and down big. And that, go back to the other picture. That's here. Just setting up, tearing down, setting up, tearing down. We finally, then we got TVs that we were doing. It just it kept growing and growing to set up and tear down. We did three services a day. We did 9, 11, and 6 o'clock at night. The 6 o'clock at night we did because there was people that were coming on their, our Thursday night service that wanted to be a part of what we were doing, but they couldn't because they had church. And we didn't want to take them from their church. So we did a night service so they could come and be a part of our night service. And so that was just so grateful that, that God moved in that place and we got to experience the growth there that we had. While we were there, we, we entered, entered into the... I don't know if you guys remember the parade that we entered into. I don't even think we have a picture of that float that I built. We got eighth place. I think it was like 100 entries and we got eighth place in the, in the, in the parade. Got no word from them. We come to this place right when COVID happened. The guy didn't want to rent to us. He said he didn't want to rent to a church. And I understand now I'm looking back and thinking that, you know, it could have a brand new church could have washed out real quick. And he's a businessman. And so I'm like, all right. Well, then the Lord told him he was going to rent to us. And he said, you still want that building? All right. So we took the building. COVID happened. We started growing, though. God started moving. God started changing things, doing things here in this place. The Spirit of God kept getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And so, the things that have happened here with almost 1,700 people in the water from the time we met Pastor Todd to now. Healings that we've seen that are maintained. Healings that have happened that are maintained. Some of them have been healed and they was taken away from them because we have to steward our healing. But there's been so much healing that's maintained and just stayed with us and stayed with, with this ministry. And I'm grateful for that. There's been some that have come back to get new healing. But the move we're getting ready to make is a big move. It's scary. I want to be honest with you. I was scared. I was scared to think that we're going to move from this place to a bigger place. Um, it was... I, did, I, 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 didn't want, I wasn't on board with it. <laughs> But the Lord said to. So I laid out a fleece. I laid out a pretty stiff fleece to the Lord. I said, all right, if you want us to do this, this needs to happen. And I, I think I'd shared this with some of you before. Fire Marshal wanted us to have a sprinkler system over there. 8,900 square feet. And... We walked through the place, looked through the place, and, and the sprinkler system was going to be about $30,000 to put a sprinkler system in there. The owner of the property wasn't going to put it in, so we would have had to put that bill had we stepped into that part of it. And, and so, it's so cool because I get to pray with a lot of the city officials and, and talk to them and, and, and know a little bit about their lives and get to, um, get to invest some time into them. And I told him, I said, well, I'll be praying about it and I'll be asking the Lord what he wants to do, what's going to happen. Well, he ended up calling one of his other friends from the state and, the, and they said, well, the square footage for what you guys are doing is 12,000 square feet where you don't have to have a sprinkler system. So now we don't have to have a sprinkler system over there because we're under 12,000 feet. And I'm grateful for that because that's an expense that I don't want to have. You guys know that I've marketplace shopped everything. Everything in here is paid off. I've marketplace, marketplace, marketplace to pay the things that we have to pay for them so we can manage the money well in this place. What we're going to do 
there's two buildings over here. I don't know if you've seen them. There's a Fastenal building that has all the, right next to the, the old Beefcake Burgers, which is now a New Mexican restaurant. The Fastenal building, from that Fastenal building all the way down to the Nails place. We're going to have 15,000 square feet. We have 5,000 now. So we're going to triple in size. We're going to have our own sanctuary inside of this. So uh, my brother Rick drew up some prints for me. Am I allowed to say that, Rick? Where do you at? I don't even know. I keep saying. All right. Well, we're allowed. Here we go. Um, so this is, this is the place. So this is the front of the building. So you've got the entry to the church here. This will be the entry to the daycare facility. Daycare facility. I feel like that the Lord has put on our hearts to run a daycare for the church in, this, in the city. Listen, to raise the children up the way that He wants them raised. Not with the way the world is trying to take our children, but the way that He's called for them to be raised. That's our goal, is to raise them up, to know Him, to know His Word. Talked to someone last week and said that some of the kids don't even know that God made the trees. That breaks my heart, that the kids don't even know the things that God has done for them. Because the world has messed their minds up so much. So here we are. We're going to have a 6,000 square foot daycare. You can go to that picture. The big one. Yeah. Here it is. Go back to the other picture. And in the back here, in this back corner, is going to be a playland for the kids. I don't know where it's going to come from. Somebody's going to donate it to us. It's just going to happen. I'm just going to, it's just going to happen. But this is the, this is the church. You're going to walk in here and you're going to have, I don't have a pointer. I need one. You're going to walk in here and you're going to have the reception area. You're going to have this, uh, this entryway. There's going to be a side entry here to the sanctuary. There's going to be entry here, an entry there, and an entry there. The pool is going to be down there. But this, the, the sanctuary is going to be separate from the rest of the building. There's going to be a hall all the way around. Bathrooms, nice brand new bathrooms down there. I designed them. Um, I did. I, they used my print to get put their bathrooms in over there. Because I already did this once for them. And the little kitchenette over there in the back area. So we're going to have seating all the way throughout this hallway for you just to mingle and talk. Because I know some of you come in the morning, you want to just talk and you want to just catch up on stuff. And I want prayer time to be... There's Rick. I saw I didn't see you over. And I'm, I, want, I want prayer time to be a sacred thing. So I want anyone, when you're ready to step in the sanctuary, then you're ready to pray. It's okay to talk. It's okay to catch up. It's okay to fellowship. I want you to do that more during the week. Get each other's phone numbers and exchange them. But we'll be able to seat about 250 in the, in the new sanctuary. We're going to have a green room, a prayer room. We're going to have a seating area for, for the prayer people to get up and sit, sit and actually watch what's going on in the pool from the side to be praying for them. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I, I, I am so excited about what God's doing. And some of you might think, well, we're not that big yet. We are. We're ready. We're ready for the move. We're ready for what God's doing for us. There's finances going to be involved with this. Because we're going to move in here, we're, um, Clint and I are now negotiating all the different things that I want and what he wants. So I want new air conditioners. Those are the old air conditioners from Dollar General from when it was first built and uh, years ago, 72, I think, 74. And so I want new AC units. So we're going to, it's $25,000. He's going to have to put that bill. So we're negotiating. I want the front to be painted what we want it. I want our old place to stand out. I want our Life of Love sign on front. We're going to have signs out here. And that's his requirements. He wants us to have our signs out here and on the front of the building. I got a quote on signs the other day. It was stupid high. 
I don't know. I mean, I've never had a sign made before. I've always marketplace shop, but um, they want eighteen thousand dollars. I think is what it was. Was that what it was? Eighteen thousand four hundred something dollars for a sign. For all the signs. So I'm trying to rack my brain to think of how else I can do that because it has to be a certain sign that he wants on the building that the city approves. So, um, but God's going to provide. <laughs> I'm not even stressed out about it. I'm not even stressed out. This is why this pool right here, when, when the Lord said to get this pool and I asked you guys about this pool and I said we need to raise $7,500 to buy this pool. They had paid $30,000 for a year before we bought it. I offered them $7,500 marketplace shopping. <laughs> and you guys raised $13,000. Is that right? $16,000. When we was asking for $7,500. Now was enough to help start build out the back because we didn't even know the back part was here at part of this building until I walked around back one day and I saw these double doors and I opened them up and it's just a big gravel pit. So that whole back was just nothing but a gravel pit of peat gravel. And I'm like, what is this place? The big old pie. And I said, well, we could probably use this. So I called him and I called the, the landlord and I said, hey, we want the place back here. What's it going to cost? So he added um, a couple hundred dollars to our rent and we ended up building that place out over there. We paid for it. We built it out. He paid for the concrete. We poured the concrete, Rick and I. <laughs> Listen. It was, it was good. Was it good, Rick? No, it about killed us. It literally about killed us before the concrete. And I'm not even exaggerating. It literally about killed us. I mean, I think we both would have just, just wanted to sink in the concrete and be done. <coughs> Rick, look. I didn't want to... I, yeah, I don't even go there. So we had to drag the concrete from, from, from the front of the building. They could only come in like 10 feet. Walk back here and go 10 feet and then go back to the back corner right up here. We drug the concrete all the way back there. I don't want to mention that because... We had so many people help. We had so, so many um, people come in and help us try to get it finished. The trial machine broke down. We couldn't get a trial machine. It was on New Year's Eve. Uh, it, just, it, was a, it was a mess. There's a few waves in it, but it goes with our contour of our theme. <laughs> The waves, I mean, the ladder won't set straight back there, but it's all right. It's all good. It was free. The material was free. But I'm grateful that God has taken us from one place to another. And I want to talk a minute about what we've accomplished. We have a Caneo school. We have year three of Caneo school. I am in year three. I'm learning so much about the Word of God that I never knew before. I never understood it the way I understand it now. I've never seen it how I see it now. You know, I know we have all our prophetic classes and those things. I'm learning all those things, learning. But the Bible side of it, the deep Hebrew culture, the Bible side, I did not even understand most of that the way I understand it now and Steve has helped me out with that it's been incredible we we're doing year one again a third year for year one we got year two class and I'm the only year three this year but then next year we'll have more but we're just going to grow and grow and grow with that we've had all the people come and get in the water and be healed lives transformed Parts one. Babies in the water. We've had babies in the water. We got that picture. We've had 50 Amish come to get into water to, to, because they wanted more of Jesus. And they drove an hour and a half to get here. <laughs> an hour and a half to get here because they wanted more of Jesus. We've had people come and work our monthly revival from Ohio, from, from Kentucky, 
from Illinois to work it. Just come to work. They don't even come to this church. We've had people come from Fishers to just work it. They're like, we just want to come down and be a part of working it and, and, and doing what God has called us to do through you guys. What a miracle. What a miracle that God is doing in this place. What else we have? Had our outreach parties. Fourth of July outreach parties. We've had people come and people go. That's part of it. That's part of it. I want them to leave right, leave with good good heart. This is what I don't want. This is what we come to this city to change. Because there's so many people in this city that are headed there. So many. Stay there a minute. So many that are headed that way. You don't want to think it's real. You don't want to think we, we, we serve a God that, that you think lets that, lets that happen. We don't. We don't serve a God that would let that happen. We let that happen because we don't serve God. And we have to be the ones that steward His Word in the way that we bring it to people in the world. So they can find Him, find their identity, find who they are. Transition their lives in a way that they, they rise up to do what God has called them to do. We've got to see awesome speakers come. We've had Pastor Todd Smith. We've had Derek Snodgrass. Pastor Tony Costa. They're one of my favorites. We have a picture of Steve Brown. Come on, give me a picture of Steve Brown. We got one? Do we have one? I know I sent you one. I sent her about a thousand pictures this morning. Last minute. Well, Steve Brown, he's right here. We and we have. <laughs> Listen, Steve is a big part of my life, man. A big part of this ministry. His prayers have kept me up and kept me going. If you can see me, if you can see Steve with me. He's behind me holding my hands up. He is. He is. And I'm thankful that God continues to bring more men, more people, more women, more sons and daughters to do that very thing, to help us all keep our hands high, focused on Him, serving Him, living for Him, doing what He's called us to do. Oh, we can change from that picture. <laughs> Who's not going there? Yeah. Come on. Thank you. I'm glad you're not. <laughs> I can't read your lips. The challenge card you did a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so a couple weeks ago we did a challenge to, um, to tithe. If, you're not, if you haven't tithed, if you haven't ever tithed before, just a challenge to um, give 10% of what you bring in and we just challenge you that that when you do that God's going to bless you over and abundant more than you could ever imagine and the challenge is that if you do this and you feel like that you've not been blessed and God's not helped you and God's not moved in your life then then privately come to us and we we will give you your money back after what three three months yeah after 90 days I literally don't, no one will know about it just come to me personally, privately. I won't even share it with my wife. You say, man, I just feel like God hasn't did that. You know, it hasn't worked. But be faithful to do it. <laughs> Don't give once and then go, well, God ain't done nothing to me. Give for the three months and watch what he does. Because I promise, I'm just going to promise you, he will bless you. He will bless you. Ted Hayes will tell you, he will bless you. 
Uve will tell you, he will bless you. Rosalind Griner will tell you, he will bless you in your giving. Sheila will tell you. Helen will tell you. Jimmy will tell you. He will bless you. Kim will tell you. In your names I missed. He will bless you. Because he wants to. We are his children. And he wants to bless us. We're going to try to raise $120,000. That might sound like a lot of money to you. It's not. It's not. And what the money is going to go for, and if you, I need you to still give because we need to still run this place. He's going to give us two months rent free over there while we're building out. Our contract is up here in October, in um, March of, of 23. January, February, March, March of 23. Their lease is up on both those buildings over there December of the last 31st of this year. So their lease is up over there for both those properties. And ours is um, up three months later. So he's going to give us two months of, of free rent to build out. That's part of our negotiation. The rent's going to be um, triple what we have here. But the daycare is going to bring the funding in to help subsidize the rent. And you guys giving like the Lord has told you to give is going to subsidize that. So what the $120,000 is going to go for, continue to pay into what you're doing here because we still have to run this while we're doing that. This is going to be above and beyond what you do. You're going to be blessed. So we have to raise $120,000. It's going to go for signage. It's going to go for the build out inside the sanctuary. Now, I've already been over there several times, looked at all the walls, all the stuff. I can reconstruct, reconstruct a lot of that over there to grab. I'm not going to waste one thing. You guys can go up in the storage and look. I've still got the curtains from the very first time we met. I don't throw nothing away and I don't waste anything. So we're going to... We're going to get signage. We're going to pay for the build out of the sanctuary. We're going to have a, a bookstore and a little gift shop, you know, with our t-shirts and stuff in, in the sanctuary part or in the, not the sanctuary, but in the, the hallways. We're going to have offices um, for our leaders, for our pastors to be in, you know, separate ministry rooms where it's easy to get in and out, you know. Um, it's just going to be a neat thing. It's going to be a neat place that we're going to step into. God is going to move in such a mighty way that um, you're, going to be, you're going to be surprised. I've already got it built in my head. And, and if you guys know, it, it's, it's built. It, it's done here. I see it. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And so we're going to raise $120,000. So if you give money toward that, put in the notation building fund and all of that will go directly for that it's not going to go for anything that we're doing now it's going to go directly for that and so part of that money will go for contracting some of the work out so i don't have to do all the work i did all the work here on, on both these places and rick and and who else helped with the build out in here raise your hand if you help with the build out matt Shelley. you guys thank you thank you for your help Todd Maxwell, thank you for your help. He's sitting in the very back. He don't like to be seen or known. Todd, thank you. You guys don't know much about Todd Maxwell. <laughs> for me, at least, he'll drop whatever he's doing to come help me. Like, literally drop. Like, he could be in the middle of a project and go, okay, I'll be there. He, Bam, he's there like that. It's like Flash. I don't know. He just he was your Michigan there. buddy to go take down the pool. Yeah. And then helped you reset it up. Went to Michigan, we took that thing down, and it was it was a job, and then we set it back up, and it was just a cool thing. I have to do it again, Todd. 
He's telling me to. So, and I know this is kind of a different service today. So that's why um, you guys need to be full when you get here. You need to be full when you get here and let that out to God and give Him the glory. You shouldn't have to come to fill up. If you have to come to church to fill up, you got problems in your life that need healing. Because you should live in overflow all the time. You should live in overflow all the time. I do. Come here, Shelly. I'm going to let my wife come up because she's got something that she wants to say. Shelly. The challenge that you... I thought we just talked about it. Oh. Challenge something important to them. They may want to sell. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a different... No, stay, stay up here. Stay up here, Shelly, in case you have something. I'm almost done. Stay up here in case you have something else. All right. So... <laughs> I am, okay, so I'm selling my motorcycle. I'm trying to get the most money out of it. I'm probably trying to get more out of it than what it's, what it's worth. But I'm trying to sell my motorcycle so I can give that money toward the project. Um, I don't, you know, I, this is what I'm doing in my life. I'm weeding out everything that's not bringing glory to God. And, and that's across the board. I've got some stuff. It, it takes my time from Him. And you guys don't have to do this the way I'm doing it. But I literally am stripping myself of everything that's not from God. That's not going to enhance the kingdom of God. Um, so, but I want to say this, because the Lord told me this yesterday when I was talking to him about it. Things that help you to relax, things that help you get in a, your mindset a better place, those things, keep a hold of because your life being healthy is part of growing. You have to have a healthy life. So things that make you happy, you know, I know Rick and May walk a lot and they walk the, the hills and, and it's a whole ordeal to get in their club. You know, you got all these things you got to go through to even get into the club. Literally, you have to fall down to get in their club. I think it's a, and it's part of the initiation. But so, there. So, um, but my challenge is, is that you would find something in your life that is not, that, that you can live without. Something that's valuable, not just a whatnot, but something that's valuable that you can go, you know what, I, can, I could probably live without this. Sell that thing and give that money to God. In that, watch what the blessing comes in your life. Watch how the blessing comes in your life. I'd sell my house if I didn't need it. I do need it. And sh <laughs> Happy wife, happy life. So we, we need the house. But... So just think of that. Is there something that you want to challenge yourself with? Is like, you know, I, I did like my motorcycle. And I love my motorcycle. I love riding. I've had seven of them. And I, you know, I've, they come and go because they don't really matter to me. But um, this one was kind of special because it was my 50th, on my 50th birthday. And it was a 50-year-old bike. And I thought, this is, this is cool. Get to ride a 50-year-old bike on my 50th birthday. And it was born when I was. And so, but, but I have to get past all that. I'm going to sell the bike. So if you want a bike, it's a 1970 Honda. Anybody online, it's a 1970 Honda. 450, but it's got a 650 engine on. It's been custom built. So make me an offer. I'm going to give my number over the 867-5309. Yes. So anything else that you want to share with that? What do you have that you want to get rid of? I don't remember because it's been in storage for about a year. The whole thing just like come and... Just anything. I mean, I don't know. That's what cell. I was just going to say. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you know, just be obedient to do it. Um, personally, I have no idea. You got a couple of purses. Do I have purses? <laughs> He thinks I have all these purses. I think I have like three. And I'm not even an accessorizer, as you can tell. Um, I'll bring them next week. I'll go through storage. I'll bring them. If I, yeah, if we could go to storage and get them, I can sell some. Yeah. I'm just teasing. Are they worth them. anything? I don't think they're even worth it. But just think, just think of something because, listen, this is real. This is real life. I mean, we're getting ready to make a transition. 
It's going to be good. I mean, it's scary. It is scary. I'm not going to tell you I'm not, I, I'm scared. But I keep laying fleeces out and it keeps happening. Things that God's just showing me all the stuff through the fleeces I'm laying out. It just keeps answering prayer, answering prayer, answering prayer. So I'm just, I'm just moving forward. Moving forward, you know. I got, when soon the fire marshal said, you're a go, I'm a go. And so that's my, where my heart is right now. Here real quick about the daycare part. Yeah. Um, please be in prayer if any of you have daycare experience or licensed in some way or um, obviously we've we've talked with Darlene um, and nothing's set in stone. We don't even know the fullness of what we have to do. We do know it's a little more lenient being a church and um, so we're, this week I'll call the state and get all the details, but just to be in prayer about that, obviously. Um, even we do know and have heard there's, it's needed service for our city. There's a yeah. lot of names on lists and um, backed up lists. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't wanna be bombarded. We probably won't take babies the first year, but one year old to five year olds is, we real I, I babies are my my thing so I want to do babies all, at some point just not sure of the help because you have to have one baby or two think two babies to one adult so we're just not sure how many people would even be interested in helping um, obviously we'll have some paid positions I would love for the older people who may not be around their grandchildren much or just have a heart for babies or young ones obviously one uh, one to three year olds they love to be rocked read to um, we would love people to come in and give their time a couple times a week you know to love on these babies things like that to um, just any way we can enhance these little lives yeah. So um, in our hearts right now, it would be kind of ran just like an at-home daycare. Um, and my at-home time with my little ones, I did do some preschool stuff, little homeschool. So we want them taught. It's not going to be necessarily a preschool, but we will teach them things of the Lord, teach them fun things, um, flashcards, just fun toys. Yeah. So we have all that to be thinking about. Um, it won't be TV on and you're sitting in front of a TV. Mm -hmm. We probably won't have electronic devices mm -hmm. allowed while they're there. It mm -hmm. will, we want it to be human to human contact, um, relational. Um, that's how they thrive. So. Yeah. So we're going to provide, so that's going to help us provide, um, jobs for the city not a lot of jobs but some jobs for the city you know we're, we're going to have i think we've planned like five um people that are employed so that's going to be and then we're going to have some or some of the ladies are going to come and just volunteer time to sit with some of the kids and just be a part of it you know everyone has to go through a, a scanning and you know and make sure your background's good and not to disclude anybody because i know lives change and everyone changes but there is a criteria we have to go by and um you know for the state and so yeah it's going to be good you guys ready for a move it is going to be good listen i'm ready thank you shelly i'm ready so um like all the stuff you see here will just be in the hallways this the sanctuary is going to be simple it's going to be simple and um but it's going to be good hopefully by then we have a worship team built and we can get out. And this is, this is my thing. I want to share that and then we'll close. With the worship team, we, we do have people that can worship right now. We do have people that can play instruments and do things. This is the thing. The Lord told me to guard the platform with my life if necessary. And that's what I'm doing. You might think it a little hard of me, but I'm guarding this with, with everything in me. I don't want the platform stolen by entertainment. I don't want the platform stolen by anything other than what God wants for it. People who He wants up here. Voices that He wants to speak from this place. I have to do that. I have to do that. And, and if you think I'm hard in some areas, um, I'm just, I'm the one that has to answer to it. 
See, if I let someone up here who's not supposed to be up here, and you, you guys won't have to answer for that. I do. Ain't it a little stiffer penalty, Steve, on a pastor than it is for a convert? <laughs> and like five times or ten times, it's like, it's, it's a lot, man. It's stiff. No. Listen, I, I, wanted, I want to honor God. I hear Him well. I hear Him well. I want to honor Him. And when He says not to do something, I just don't do it. Other people have, I, listen, I get emails. I get phone calls. I get texts. I get all this stuff that just tears me apart. It's all right. That's okay. But I'm minding him. That's all I have. He's the one I have to answer to, not you. Not your thoughts, not your not knowing behind the scenes what's going on, why we've made decisions we've made. So, bless you guys. Let's stand. Is there anybody here this morning that's not saved? Anybody that don't know Jesus this morning? I don't want to leave without praying for you. So let's close our eyes. We're going to thank God for this. And if you need prayer this morning, come up and we're going to pray with you. We're going to lay hands on you and pray with you. Shelly, was there someone that you wanted me to pray with this morning? That she, she here? Okay, yes. Come up here. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you right now. Father, you know everything that's going on. Lord, we just ask right now that heaven would be downloaded to God. You would intervene right now, Jesus. Healing would happen right now, Jesus. Every attribute of heaven would be manifest right now in Jesus' name. We glorify you, Father. You are merciful. You are powerful. Thank you, God, that you've let us do this. We get to be a part of this. Because of your name, Jesus, we get to see people healed. We get to see people transformed and renewed. So, Father, we're believing right now for complete wholeness and health. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Jesus, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If anyone else need prayer this morning, we'll pray for you. Tammy, if you want to come up here, stand. Anyone else needs prayer? Tammy can pray for you. Shelly can pray for you. Come on up. They're coming up. They're coming up, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord.